that place celebrates comedy. Mm-hmm. Like Boston comedy is like it's very important to people that live in Boston. Yeah. yeah. And when comics succeed and they come back to Boston, it's a very special thing. It feels amazing. I did the the garden when I did the garden. I was like, mm-hmm. I was gonna cry. Yeah. Like before I got on stage, I was like, F- this is nuts. Yeah, like, for me, there is... was the Orpheum, because that's mm-hmm. where I used to go for, to see concerts. Yeah. And when I played the Orpheum last year, it was the last show I did of the tour. It was very emotional. Yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a special place. And it's one of the most important places for the development of comedy. You think of all the great comics that have come from there. Mm-hmm. Jay Leno. Like, people forget yeah. how good Jay Leno was. Jay Leno, when he was just a stand-up before he hosted The Tonight Show, was one of the best comics alive. One of the best alive. ever. Ever. One of the best ever. He was I amazing. love Jay. I remember when I was working on Conan as a writer, and Jay came to do a panel, you know, to be interviewed on Conan. It was like a favor, to, you know, because he was the bigger guy. It was early in Conan's tenure. But he sat and did bits like he used to on Letterman. Like, he didn't talk about The Tonight Show. He just did bits. And one of them was, he said, I was, ah, I was out at the hotel today, and uh, you know, he goes, I went, I went to CVS to buy something, and uh, I paid, and the woman didn't even look at me. She just gave me my change. And uh, and I go, that's it. No, thank you. No, have a nice day. She says it's on the receipt. <laughs> this is a great bit. That is a great bit. No, he was still. He's just. Uh, I loved him so much. And on the Tonight Show, he was. You know, pe- some people hated him. Whatever. It's easy easy to make fun of him. Yeah. Um. But I. I don't know. I, I. He gave me the lead spot on the Tonight Show way before anybody else did. Way before any other. I was doing Letterman. I was doing Conan. But I was always like two or three. And Leno, they told I had it was booked to be the second guest, but they told me Jay said he wants you promoted. He wants you to be first and do two segments, like for uh, Reynolds. That's amazing. And I was like, what? And he like he liked our rapport. I think I also brought out some funny in him. Yeah. But that was a huge thing that he did for me. And to this day, like every time throughout my career, once I knew Jay, I, every time something good would happen, if I won an Emmy, hosted SNL, or did something that people heard about, I knew I'd get a call from Jay. And he just leaves a voicemail. He never, I don't know how to reach him. I don't have his number. He just leaves a voicemail and says, hey, I saw you did this. Now this is just a good job. I'm really happy for you. And he has nothing he wants from me. Right. But he always called me. And then when I had a, a my, my bad time, I thought, I'm not going to hear from Jay again. And he called me. And he left the same message. He said, hey, man, I hope you're doing okay. Uh, you know, everybody loves you. You're okay. And, you know, he's never not been there. He's right. like a real mensch. He's a real, really great guy. He I just is. think it's important to say because he's caught a lot of shit from comedians. He's caught a lot of shit for no reason. I mean, I get he was hosting The Tonight Show, and it's a different sort of thing. And the, the monologue was very homogenized. But if you hang out with him and you talk, like he did my podcast, and he told a story about doing stand-up for a bunch of mob guys. And uh, that this mob guy, he, he tells a story about this mob guy yelling at a preacher because the priest like uh, said something and he was like, didn't we give you enough money? And he's s- <laughs> screaming and swearing as this mob yeah, guy. And I'm yeah. like, this is incredible. Yeah. Yep. I remember while he was telling the story, I was like, this is amazing because yes. you get to see the real Jay Leno. That's right. No, he's a viciously funny guy. But I understood this Tonight Show strategy when I watched him in an interview once. And he said, my goal is to come up with jokes that have the broad broadest possible appeal like that's just how he thinks about that job yeah jokes that every single person can like on some level and obviously those are watered down easy jokes you know and even he was i was on once and kathy lee was kathy lee gifford yeah was the lead guest and she's talking about her son cody and she says you know the 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 he has a stage in his bedroom and jay's like what and she's he's got a stage and lights her son she's she says you know kids kids love to put on uh, shows and he goes, yeah, the gay kids do. <laughs> and <laughs> place went crazy. The Tonight Show audience went nuts laughing, and she was del- she had tears. She was laughing so hard. Oh. And I saw him after this in the segment break go up to somebody and, and go like that. They, they cut it out. It was oh. it didn't air. And I know that was him going like, Don, Don, let's not use that. Let's not use that. <laughs> so that's his goal. People get yeah. to have their own goals. Well, to those guys that were coming up in that era, that spot was the crown. That was that yep. was the that was the throne. If you could host the Tonight Show, you were the man, and everybody wanted the Tonight Show gig. And he protected that thing yep. like it was a, a sacred institution. That's right. And that's what he had always wanted. And he still did stand up. He, was so, he has a strange strategy, though. He doesn't have any material that's out there. 
He goes, eh, if I put my stuff out there, and you know how much that cost me? He still believes that. He yeah. still believes yeah, that. I'll lose a half a million dollars. And think, you know, yeah. He had this yeah. idea in his head that he couldn't do his act then because his mm -hmm. act would be out there. Mm -hmm. Which is, you know, that's his take on things. He's at his best doing his car show. Yes. Because that's when you get to see the real Jay Leno's because he fucking loves cars. Yes. I've had so many conversations with that guy where he'll just go deep into mm -hmm. cars and just, he loves them. And it's not like he loves like cars that make him look like a baller. No, he's, he loves like old steam powered engines. He loves right. like weird fucking tires. Yeah, he knows everything. Everything. I, one time I did the Tonight Show and after my set, uh, he said, uh, hey, stick around. Are you, do you have to go somewhere? And I was like, no, you know. Yeah, hang around. I didn't know what that meant, so I went back to my room, my um, dressing room, and one of the producers said, "Hey, Jay wants to talk to you." You know, so I hang. I didn't know what it was, so I so I wait for a while, and he comes with it. He's got a motorcycle helmet, and he goes, "Hey, let me show you my. It's my new bike." He takes me out and shows me he has a jet motorcycle. It was he had created it. It's a jet engine with a motorcycle frame built around it. And I go, wow, is that a jet? And he goes, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, I took it out of a helicopter and I put it on this. Uh, and he starts <laughs> it, and there's this blue flame coming out of the bag. <laughs> and he's <laughs> and uh, he puts down the visor and he just takes off. And he's not circling around. He just, I just hear him fading in the distance. And I go to the producers. So is that it? And she goes, yeah, you can go. <laughs> he, just, he didn't even say anything even like talking just hey look at this also anyway. imagine this guy who's the host of the tonight show who just rides a motorcycle to work yeah <laughs> like he would ride a motorcycle to work all the time like I mean, all the money that's banking on him yeah. is the biggest show and talk show and that's this guy's right. out there on a motorcycle on a experimental motorcycle <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he told me another time because i asked him about that bike that he got he had to pay for a guy's Lamborghini because he melted the front of a Lamborghini. It was too close, <laughs> and he gunned it, and he just melted the whole front of a car. So, well, he probably had spare parts at its place. Sure, he has eleven garages. There's eleven warehouses filled with cars. When I went to his place, I saw one warehouse, and I was like, "This is incredible." I brought my car there, and we did this little segment on my car, and. He goes, yeah, I got 11 of these. I go, you have 11 of these? And he goes, yeah, basically. Yeah, 10 was not enough. He's got 11 giant warehouses filled with cars, and it's immaculate. Like, you could eat off the floor. And there's all these really cool old automotive signs on the mm. wall. And it's like, fucking, it's Strange. incredible.